Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here, and it's another TRT TV to repair. This one, the it's actually my grandma's TV. She said it emitted smoke. She turned it on. It was walking for a couple of seconds, then shut off, and emitted smoke. So I popped the cover off. I decided to check it on on the place. I went there, popped the car off, saw this, which is a B plus capacitor, hardly microfarad, 160 volts, and I saw that it's vented. Focus, you! And I saw that it's vented. See, it bulged. You just about can see a crack. So I replaced it with another one, 100 microfarad, 200 volt, and now it does this when I turn it on. Listen. Listen again. So the relay clicks. The power supply squeals. So, the problem? It's squealing. So, most likely a, a shorted rail somewhere. I guess the short is on a B. Mm. And that can be a horizontal output transistor. And yeah, if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. Again, I said it in previous video, I'm gonna say it here. Again, that CRT TV is not a thing that a beginner should poke inside and uh, if beginner can sp I don't suggest beginners to poke inside and furthermore I don't suggest people who don't know it uh, who don't have basic knowledge in electronics poking inside there are high voltages inside you can hurt yourself you can potentially kill yourself I do not take any responsibility for your actions all right Okay, so the cover is off, and the model is, by the way, a KCT-2007D. And so, what I did, just after I took the cover off, I took an alligator clip and a screwdriver and tried to discharge a CRT, and I heard no spark whatsoever, which kind of already hints at the dead horizontal output transistor. And by looking inside, I actually rem rem remembered that I repaired this TV quite a while ago already. Here you can see the big transistor, it is in horizontal output, what you're looking at right now. And the schematic calls for 2SD1555, and I put there 2SD. 1395 1398 excuse me that was in beginning of my career if you will of CRT TV repair and I just put browse through the data sheet and I put a um, more powerful transistor in, in it but guess what in a box here I have the same type which failed it actually was working fine I don't know why it failed and 2SD 1 triple 5 so I'm gonna put it in takes it out and yeah I tested it and it's shorted collector meter is shorted so wet if the collector emitter is shorted, it makes no sense to beep out any other junctions. Okay, so uh, I kind of wonder why it failed. So I'm gonna take a look at this, at a couple of components nearby. Namely, those two film caps you see. 
one of those caps right across collector emitter. Mm, one of those. Okay. Yeah, and here you may be able to see a capacitor with which has a B written on it, on top of it. That's a capacitor replaced on a B plus, the one which exploded. I don't quite know what caused it to fail. Actually, is it the transistor shorted out, created a, like some kind of overload in, in cap popped, or it is the the cap popped and caused the transistor to go out? Interesting. But anyway, so I'm gonna put this fella in, and we'll see. Now the transistor is replaced. Here you can see the joints. I'm gonna clip the lids a little bit, a uh, little bit. I'm gonna clip the lid at the very end. And uh, since now I know the nature of this beast, um, I'm kinda curious actually what caused it to fail. And it may very well be the power supply producing way too high voltage thus stressing the component. So, what I did is I went my, with my ESR meter and I checked um, cap small capacitors inside the switch more power supply in the primary section. You can see it's divided with this black line here. That's a hot section, primary, hot, high voltage one, which you shouldn't poke like that, but I discharged the bulk capacitor here and the B plus capacitor, so I'm fine. And, yeah, let me show you those two capacitors. I'm too lazy to take the board out and hook everything, so I'm gonna show you this way. Okay, let me try. There are only two capacitors inside. You can see those bastards, right? Those two blue electrolytics. Now the one which is on the, in the top, on the top, the top one is actually very bad. The bottom one at least registers on ESR meter, but the, the one on the top just doesn't do anything. The needle just uh, doesn't move at all. So I'm gonna take them out check their value and replace them because if those caps go bad sometimes they will cause the transistor and the switch more power supply to go goodbye and that is just another pretty expensive part to repair these sets and remember these sets are very cheap to buy you can buy a used one for like <laughs> I don't know your prices, but here you can buy it very cheaply. And the price of that transistor can be like a good fraction of this, like at least a quarter. Yeah, remember I I told you that it is a top capacitor which is bad. No, it is the bottom capacitor which was bad because I was looking from the on, on the board from the different side. The that I showed in a camera. So, the both capacitors are 47 microfarad 50 volts. I'm gonna say it's pretty much standard for these things. It doesn't show up good on camera because this capacitor is discolored. Let's try to show this one. They are the same, It's they are Philips brand actually, see? Cool. So I'm gonna replace them. Yeah, they both read over 10 ohms ESR. 47 microfarads should definitely have smaller ESRs than this. Just for the giggles, actually. Let's test them. 
Okay, so that's a discord one, you can see normal capacitance, but 20 ohms of ESR. Oh, that's another one. 4.9 ohms, so that's more or less, but... Yeah. Let me find replacements. I don't know if I have them, actually. Mm. Okay, I looked at the schematic and... Uh, the capacitor here, C911, sorry, it's upside down, is actually in series, um, is in a base circuit of this BGT switch, so it's important to keep the value there the same. And this one, C909, 909, maybe you'll be able to, he to see it, is in a um, bootstrap winding, there is, you can see a little glass diode here which rectifies the output of uh, an auxiliary winding of this transformer and there is a little transistor circuit with that trim port as you can see which co which says B plus adjust which as seal screen already tells you allows you to adjust the B plus and this is called indirect regulation because you don't have an optocoupler on the secondary and you don't optocoupler on the secondary don't have a reference there so I'm gonna put um, 4750 volt here and 4700 volts there those caps are I couldn't find two of this well you in my stash so I'm gonna put 4750 and 4700 this one is gonna be in bootstrap this is gonna be in series with the base should be fine it, this will at least keep the power supply happy I don't know about the output cap so I'm gonna quickly glance through them the problem with these TVs is when you want to do it right, you should replace a bunch of capacitors. And I already was here, and I can see that this this capacitor I replaced before already. So yeah, to do it right, you need to replace a whole lot of capacitors, and that makes the repair very expensive. So that's why in most of the cases. You will see me replacing just a few parts necessary to, for it to get going and uh, a few extra parts to prevent it exploding on the next day. Yeah. Okay, so to be plugged in my wattmeter, let's switch it on and see how much does it consume. What you see is a watts. Oh, 50 watts. Okay, and we have a snow. And yeah, it, I lied to you. I already checked it. I checked the B, plus. it is 120 volts after I actually went and Marked around with a trim pot, which I showed you earlier, and that procedure set B plus to 120 volts on a button, which is a normal value for this size of TV. So, yeah, I'm gonna go and turn the focus adjustment. This one it says so, maybe you'll be able to see it. The top one is focus. I'm gonna use a screwdriver there and twist it, tweak it in such a way to get the crispest possible picture. And that will be it. But I'm gonna do that off camera because it's very boring. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya.